Assalamu alaikum and hi everyone. Salam Ramadan. Today, we will cover the anesthesiology and this topic is important to you especially during your attachment in the critical unit such as in the ICU, cardiac critical unit, CCU, in the operation theater and also in the surgical ward. Before we go further, this is the learning objective of these particular topics. At the end of the day, you should be able to discuss the principles of anesthesiology. You need also be able to describe the pharmacokinetics, mechanism of operations, organ effects, and the side effects of inhaled and intravenous anesthetic. You need also to describe the balanced anesthesia that used in the clinical practice. Anesthetic agents is a drug which produces reversible loss of sensation and it also can relieve the pain. It usually be given before the surgery. There are various forms of anesthesia. The type of anesthesia that patient will receive are depending on the type of surgery and the medical condition of the patient. Local anesthesia is an anesthetic agent given to temporarily produce a loss of sensation in a particular area of the body. The patient will remain conscious during the local anesthetic. For minor surgery, a local anesthetic can be given via injection to the side or allow it to absorb into the skin. However, doctors may use other types of anesthesia when there are large number, large area needs to be numb, or if a local anesthetic agent or local anesthetic injection cannot penetrate the deep enough to, into the targeted area. Regional anesthesia is used to numb only the portion of the body that will undergo the surgery. Usually, an injection of anesthetic is given in that area of nerve that provides feeling to that part of the body. There are several forms of regional anesthetic such as peripheral nerve block, regional anesthetic, spinal anesthetics, and epidural anesthetics. A spinal anesthetic is used for lower abdominal, pelvic, rectal, or lower extremity surgery. This type of anesthetic involves injecting a single dose of the anesthetic medications into the area that surrounds the spinal cord. The injection is made into the lower back below the end of the spinal cord and resulting cause numbness in the lower body. This type of anesthesia is most often used in the orthopedic procedures of the lower extremities. The epidural anesthetic is similar to the spinal anesthetic is commonly used for surgery of the lower limbs, chest, or abdominal surgery, and also using during the labor and childbirth. This type of anesthesia involves continually infusing an anesthetic medication through a thin catheter, or also known as hollow tube. The catheter is placed into the space that surrounds the spinal cord in the lower back, causing numbness in the lower body. We go for the third type of anesthesia, which the main part that we'll cover today, which are the general anesthesia. This general anesthesia is an anesthetic used to induce unconsciousness during the surgery. The medicine is either inhaled through a breathing mask or tube or given through an intravenous IV line. A breathing tube may be inserted into the one pipe to maintain proper breathing during the surgery. Once the surgery is complete, the anesthesiologist seizes the anesthetic and the patient are taken to the recovery room for further monitoring. Let's move on to the how general anesthetics works. Once the patient is subjected to the anesthetic, he or she will encounter these five principal components which are immobility, amnesia and unconsciousness. The action of anesthetic on the thalamus and reticular activating system leads to reversible loss of consciousness. The actions on the hippocampus, amygdala and prefrontal cortex will cause amnesia to the patient. And finally, 
the action of the anesthetic on the spinal cord is responsible for immobility, analgesia, and inhibition of autonomic reflexes. There are two types of anesthetic use in the general anesthesia, which are inhaled anesthetics that mostly being used as maintenance of anesthesia, and also the intravenous anesthetic that used for induction of anesthesia, and also being used during the short procedure of surgery. Inhalation anesthetic gave various advantage of controlling the depth of anesthesia. It also can give benefit in terms of minimal metabolism and mostly excreted through the exhalations. Nitrooxide is the gaseous form and anesthetic which is halogenated hydrocarbons such as halotan, isofluorane, desfluorane and semifluorane in the volatile liquid forms. For intravenous anesthetic, the mostly anesthetic used in the operating theater are propofol, thiopental, and etomidate. It is because of its fast actions. Ketamine, which has slower acting drugs, can be administered as intravenous anesthetic beside the opioid analgesic and some drugs in the benzodiazepine group of class. Now let's look at the mechanism of action of the general anesthetic. In our second week of lecture, we have learned that the reticular formation of the brainstem is basically responsible to maintain consciousness in the patient. There are some stimulatory neurons which stimulate reticular formation and keep us awake. And also, there are inhibitory neurons which inhibit the reticular formation and put us to sleep. The idea behind the anesthetic or our goal here is to inhibit the stimulatory neuron transmission and at the same time stimulate the inhibitory neuron transmission which will depress the central nervous system activity. We can interfere in this normal physiology by targeting the gamma butyric acid or GABA A receptors which can stimulate the inhibitory neurons through hyperpolarization due to massive influx of negative charged chloride ions by prolonging the opening of the channels. This action making it more difficult for excitatory neurotransmitters such as glutamate to depolarize the neurons and generate the action potential. Thus, this anesthetic such as etomidate propofol and barbiturates inhibit the reticular formation and put the patients into unconscious state. Anesthetics also can inhibit the stimulatory neurons by basically inhibiting the n methyl d aspartate receptors or NMDA receptors for short. This effect will blocking the glutamate, which is the excitatory neurotransmitters, from binding to the NMDA receptors. NMDA receptors are located in the spinal cord and are crucial in the pain modulation and processing when neurotransmitter glutamate binds to the receptors, which allow the positively charged sodium and calcium ions to flow into postsynaptic neurons and cause depolarization depolarizing neurons. These depolarizing neurons making it more likely to fire an action potential. Ketamine and nitrooxide selectively inhibiting the NMDA receptors cause the neuron is not being activated and thus depress the central nervous system activity and decrease the neurotransmission of pain. Meanwhile, Halogenated volatile anesthetic have more diverse mechanism of action and more potent at producing immobility. Halogenated anesthetic such as halotane and fluorine and sofluorine have action as agonists on GABA receptors and antagonists on the NMDA receptors. These anesthetic also inhibit the acetylcholine and serotonin in the brain which is also excitatory neurotransmitters on their respective receptors named neuronal nicotinic acetylcholine receptors and serotonin type 3 receptors. 